Waiting in Alder Hayes Emergency Department with her mum is 14-year-old Charlotte. I was doing a tap dance. Uh-huh. We do loads of lifts and stuff. Go on. And just ended up falling. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Well, I've been doing all day. It's like, ow, 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 like that all day. OK, how did it happen? Charlotte was at school in dance. Ooh, I love a good prance. She went to do a dance move. She's getting into her groove. When she did a handstand... Where did she land? This is the worst rhyme ever, Zand. Anyway, it didn't go right. Oh, no! What a fright! She fell on her head on the floor. That sounds very sore. Ouch! But I'm supposed to do a dance tonight. I don't think I'll be able to do it. Oh, no! Tapping his way to save the day is Dr Johnny Wong. I have a little examination of your neck, is that all right? Yeah. OK. So I had a little feel down her spine to make sure there was no pain when I was touching with my finger. That hurts. She's a bit sore, is it? Yeah. I was not make sure that her neck movement was OK, so she was a bit stiff. That really hurts. The worst case scenario, she could have injured the nerves going from the back of her head down her spine, which would give this tingling sensation in her neck. Dr Wong takes a look at some x-rays done earlier to check if anything's broken. After some careful examination, he gives Charlotte the news. You've got no broken bones, but what we're going to send for you is an MRI scan. So, the x-ray is showing no bone damage, but to check there's no injury to Charlotte's brain or soft tissue, they're doing an MRI. An MRI is a special kind of imaging scan. It uses powerful magnetic fields to produce detailed pictures of the inside of your body. MRI images of Charlotte's head will give the doctors vital information about her brain and the soft tissue around it to make sure everything is working properly. I do feel like I'm in Holby City or something. No, you're not. You're on Operation Ouch. Yes, Charlotte, and it's time for your MRI scan. There's definitely no dancing for this, Charlotte. To get sharp images, patients have to lie very still. All finished, Charlotte heads back to the ward. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with that bonnet? I needed to take my bobbles out. Of course. Now my hair is all messy and not as nice. Well, well we, we like it. Find out later how Charlotte gets on with her MRI results. Are you ready to guess who today's hero is? Well, I'll give you some clues. They spend a lot of time dealing with people on one of these. Hello? And they have to... Hello, Doctor Surgery? Chris, is that you? I'm trying to book an appointment for Mr Grumbles. Where are you? We're meant to be doing an Operation Ouch takeover. Well, that's handy because I'm right here. Come on, Chris, let's go. There are nearly 3,000 doctor surgeries like this in the UK, each one seeing hundreds of patients a day. All these appointments have to be booked in and organised by the hard-working reception staff. We're about to take over the job of today's hero, reception manager Vasanti. Vasanti speaking, how may I help you? Vasanti's yeah. busy reception receives around 150 phone calls every day. You are, for lots of sick people, the first person they encounter, and you are trained to make a decision about how they get help. Reception staff have to try and extract as much information as they can from the patient. And then it's for us to decide, does this person need to see a doctor? Is it something the nurse can deal with? What are the most important skills to have as a receptionist? It's being able to use your own initiative. It's difficult dealing with challenging patients. Do they get annoyed at you? They do. We are the first port of call and they seem to take all their frustrations out on the reception staff, yes. Yikes, Chris. I think we ought to get some training. The first thing is obviously greeting the patients. I would, for example, say, good morning, the Santi speaking. How can I help you? Great. We've also got to get to grips with the appointment system. Got it, Zond? Which button was that? Hmm, this is tricky. We've seen just how important and challenging the job of a GP receptionist really is. But will our attempts to do it be met with a frosty reception? It's time for us to take over as surgery receptionists. We're going to be judged on... Prioritising appointments, or triage. Organisation. And our manner when dealing with patients. Dr Zahn's cure-all house of wonder. We can fix you and... Uh, no, that what is are you not... doing? What? What are you doing? I'm just practising my phone manners. We'll each have four fake patients to deal with. First up is a phone call. Hello? Uh, hello. Is that the uh, doctor's surgery? 
Uh, yes, this, yes, sorry, this is this is the doctor's surgery and it's Dr Chris speaking. Oh, I'm not happy how he answered the phone there. Oh, dear, Chris, that's not a good start. OK, Zand, let's see how you do. Uh, GP surgery, Zand speaking. How can I help you? I need to see a doctor urgently today, please. Could I get your date of birth, please? Well done, Zand. You got important patient information. Now, would an appointment at 11.48 this morning be OK? He's just offering the appointment without finding out what the medical reason is. It's the only appointment left of the day, which is gold dust. Watch and learn. What is the problem? I feel really, really unwell. I just need to see a doctor today. It does sound like you should come in for an emergency appointment. Are you sure that was an emergency, Chris? I don't know if I should have done that. Time for patient number two. What can I do for you? I need to book an appointment. I have a very bad back pain. Uh-oh, the phone is ringing. We have to answer this call. Um... Feeling the pressure's on? I'm sorry about that. He should have finished with the patient he was dealing with rather than answering the call. Do you mind if I just take this? I'm really sorry. Hello, it's Chris here. Do uh, Dr Chris here. Look out, Chris. Here comes patient number three. I'm going to miss my appointment. What's your name? Serena Marquez. You're over an hour late for your appointment. I'm probably a bit late now because I'm standing in this queue for a minute. Yeah, Chris. So do you mind just waiting while I deal with this gentleman? I think he's feeling um, stressed now. Uh... I'll show you how it's done. If you have a seat, we'll get you in very shortly. I'm just going to deal with this gentleman, but you won't miss your appointment. She doesn't look impressed. Can you give me your full name, sir? Hey. He has asked the patient three times now really for their name. So I think the best thing to do, I can make you an appointment in a couple of weeks. OK, yeah, um, whatever, yeah, it's, it's fine. Finally, patient four arrives. She needs an emergency appointment. But we both filled all the available slots. I've been feeling really, really faint, and I've fainted for the last couple of days. This is why I need to see if he's going to prioritise. There are no emergency appointments left here today, so you can't see a doctor here today. If you have a seat, I will have a chat with the doctors, and we will have to squeeze you in this morning. Thank you. Wow, that was hardcore. Time for the verdict. How did we do? Your triaging skills are very similar. You both gave the last appointment to the first patients. And I think for both the patients, it wasn't an emergency. Your mannerism was very good. You're both similar. When it came to organisational skills, I felt Zan was much better. Really? What? You used your initiative to squeeze that patient in. Did you send her away? So the winner is... Ta-da! Yes! I have to say, this will not be a job I'm applying for anytime soon. I actually found it very stressful. I think what we've learned is that it is a job much better left to the professionals. We should take off our receptionist jackets. Vasanti, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Ready to see some amazing experiments? Yes! A triumph! We're going to show you how your incredible body works. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Today, the hero of breathing, your diaphragm. What is going on? Lucy, meet Dr Chris. Dr Chris, meet Lucy. Zond, I know who Lucy is. We've already met. Have you? Yes. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Chris. I saw her on The Voice and it was me who asked her to come in. Was it? Yes. I thought Lucy could help us demonstrate the power of the diaphragm. Oh, right. Now, Lucy, could you give us another long note, please? Now, Lucy and other opera singers can hold a note this long because she's trained a special muscle, one which we all have, called the diaphragm. Now, your diaphragm sits here at the bottom of your rib cage. Thank you. Let's find out what the diaphragm looks like and how it works. Lucy? We're going to show... Thanks, Lucy. Your diaphragm is the main muscle you use when you breathe, which is something we all do all the time. Now, to show you what a diaphragm looks like, we've got a real one... ..from a pig. Now, this is the pig's voice box. This is the trachea, or the windpipe. These bits are the lungs, and then underneath the lungs. 
in a big, muscular sheet. That is the diaphragm. You breathe in and out about 20 to 30,000 times a day. And it's this, the diaphragm, that makes it all happen. So after your heart, it's the most important muscle in your body because it allows you to breathe. Now take a breath. Most people have no idea why the air moves into their lungs. Well, we're going to show you. Take this away, Chris. I've got a model. Now, the big bottle is your rib cage, and these things inside represent your lungs. Sand, those aren't lungs, those are my party balloons. We're using them for a very important scientific demonstration. OK, well, I suppose if it's in the service of science. Good. And this, at the bottom, is your diaphragm. Now, we tend to think that breathing is all about the lungs, but the diaphragm is the unsung hero of breathing. It's what makes it all happen, and that's why the diaphragm is such an important muscle. Now, when you breathe in, the diaphragm pulls downwards. This lowers the pressure inside this chest cavity. This creates extra space a vacuum, and air has no option but to rush in through your mouth and into your lungs to fill this space. And then you breathe out again. Your lungs really are a bit like these balloons. They have no muscles at all. They're just like bags, really, and they don't do anything without the diaphragm. It's pretty amazing. And to show you what your diaphragm looks like in action inside your body, here's mine. These big Black areas are my lungs, or party balloons. The pulsating bit in the middle is my heart, and down at the bottom, this is my diaphragm. Now, what you can see is my diaphragm here is contracted, and now it's relaxing, and as it relaxes, it rises up and forces air out of my lungs. As you then breathe in, the diaphragm contracts again, and just like the pink balloons, the lungs fill with air. That is incredible. So, we've shown you that your diaphragm is the real hero of breathing. It's one of the most important muscles in the body, enabling you to take about 30,000 breaths a day. Chris, I really want to sing now, can I? OK, Zahn, since you love it so much, but hold on just one second. OK, Zahn. Mi piace bello. I've got a real dog and his name's Bandit. Hello, Bandit. Hello. Caden has cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is something that affects your lungs. Caden's body produces thick, sticky mucus, which can make it hard to breathe and lead to infections. To help break up this mucus, Caden has to do lots of physio exercises. If I weren't to do it, I'd either get really sick or the be a lot of mucus. If I did get really sick, I might be in the hospital for a long time. So this is my bubble pep. Pep stands for positive expiratory pressure. When Caden blows into this straw, it creates pressure in his lungs, which helps to move the mucus. It starts overflowing. It makes me a bit messy, and it's fun if it's messy. This is my acapella. I blow into it, it vibrates, and it makes a funny noise. <laughs> The a cappella does a similar job to the bubble pen and gets the mucus moving. As soon as I do six blows on this, I have to do a huff of cough. That's like this. <sighs> Another piece of Caden's kit is the iNev. This delivers an antibiotic directly into his lungs to fight off any infection. It makes a big beep when it's finished, and that's how you know. And it also makes a smiley face. We'll get to see more of Caden and his treatments next time. Goodbye.